They may be fast, but they are not thick. Corvid shooting requires stealth and cunning. I am out with crow shooting enthusiasts Matt Turley and Nigel White. It's before sunrise and we're on a pig farm outside Taunton in Somerset. Matt has been shooting this piece of ground for 12 years. First season was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, we did 24,000 cartridges for the first season here. It should probably shot about 16,500 crows. Over the years now they have dropped back a, a considerable amount. You know, average day now you're probably only seeing two to two and a half thousand coming here. Well, each crow's probably eating, they reckon, about two ounces of pig food a day. So obviously two and a half thousand times by two, times by seven days a week. It's a considerable amount of food. We were slowed down a bit through April, obviously due to the lockdown. Um, we certainly made up for it now in May and obviously now into June. Um, random decoy pattern out there this morning. Um, we've got the FF5 flapper up in the tree. Obviously they can see that one from a long way off which gives them the confidence to come in over the decoys. There is one down on the ground, yeah, just a, another added attraction for them. Obviously when the crows are coming here to the field they're not looking for a uniform pattern, they're, you know, they're looking for birds that are feeding. If you look at a flock of crows, they're not all facing the same direction all the time. So we just find a random pattern works and it works well for us. A few days ago, so the birds would get used to it, Matt built a hide out of three socially distancing piglet boxes. The morning gets underway and the birds start coming in. We have been shooting for two hours and Matt is not totally delighted. Not as many as we were hoping, but obviously you know, we have been shooting this every three or four days now since the beginning of May. Um, so we have slackened numbers a bit and we've shot 1879 so far in that period. Um, you know, they are coming to the decoys. Um, not as often as we would hope, but they are. You know, we've got 53, 54 on the ground so far, so you know, yes, it's going well. We should hopefully by about 7 o'clock have hit the 100 mark, which will keep the farmer happy for another couple of days until we're back here again. Matt and Nigel head out for a half-time tidy-up. All members of the Corvid family are smart and fussy about what they see on the ground. The last few birds flared and flew away from us, which indicates they can see something they don't like. Yeah, it's probably because we've got a few that are laying on their back, so we're just picking up now and just making sure they're not laying on their back the right way up. So it's, it's actually, legs in the air actually puts them off, does it? Yes, yeah, they don't like it, so we just double check and make sure there's none laying on their back. Brilliant. Just be aware of the, the pigs as well, because oh, yeah. <laughs> they've all got young and they can move fairly quick when they want to. <laughs> One eye on the pigs and one eye on the crows. She lets me go on my way. Now, we're shooting a mixture of corvids today. Rooks, crows and jackdaws are shootable. Ravens are not. There is quite a few ravens here, yeah. We've got three or four nesting pairs within the local vicinity that we know of. And they are a nightmare. You watch them some mornings and they actually take baby piglets out of the pig ark. And how do you tell the difference when they're flying over at speed? Just a lot larger and you normally hear them calling as well, that real deep voice that they've got when they shout. You make that noise? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'd love to, but I can't. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, but um, you know, if you have a look in these pig arcs here, now we've got young pigs in there that are literally two or three days old. Yeah. And the ravens, they will come in and take those out. Another hour and we reach the 100 mark. The birds are coming in in groups, but the groups are getting further apart. Matt decides to play his joker and put up his whirly. Just, just to see if it brings them in any more readily than what they already are. Which I think it's going to when you look behind you. Yeah, yeah they, they like it. Yeah. yeah. So um, is, it, is it ever possible to kind of have too much going on? Uh, you know, too many flappers, too many whirlies? To be fair, I don't think it does, no. Especially with somewhere like here where they want to come and feed. They're used to seeing lots of movement, lots of birds, so no, I don't think it does make any difference. At the end of the day, with 179 on the ground, we have the wash-up chat. Matt said if you were to come back here two, two days' time, you'd probably get another 100. Easy, easy. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, if you stayed here right now to the last knockings of, of the evening time, you'd probably pick up another 100 birds easy. You know, it's, it's a two, three hundred bird day every day. Um, they just don't seem to decrease. So, 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 so what you're doing here is not really working, Matt, <laughs> is what he's saying. To some extent, no, but obviously, you know, when we first started here, numbers were astronomical. There was a lot more pigs being reared outside, so there was a lot more food here all the time, and numbers were a lot greater. But over the past 10 years now, they have gone down slightly, but we're still shooting exactly the same bag off of lesser birds, if that makes sense. Nigel, you shoot lead. Yeah. Matt shoots steel. I, I basically, it's not through preference. It's, it's basically what we can get at the time. Um, I've got nothing against steel whatsoever. Um, like you see today, Matt, Matt takes some phenomenal birds with steel, and I shoot steel as well. Um, people say it doesn't kill. It does kill. It does kill. I've got no problem with steel whatsoever. If they haven't got steel, then I'll shoot lead. It's as simple as that. If they haven't got lead and they've got steel, steel's cheaper, I'll buy whatever I can get. And people say you can't shoot birds over 50 yards with it. That's the, that's the real problem with steel. I disagree totally. Disagree totally. You know, I've, I've seen Matt drop, and, and myself drop birds 50, 60 yards, no problem, and, and quite consistently. Um, and I suppose if you was to talk to George Digweed, he would tell you the same. You know, if you put it in the right place, the birds are full. It's as simple as that. So people that say it doesn't kill, no. And, and Matt, are you shooting steel because you're a member of Greenpeace and, and you? <laughs> yes. No, um, just purely, it's cheaper. You know, obviously I don't don't supply my own cartridges, so I try and keep the cost down for the farmer. And steel at the time was the you know, best choice. You know, and at five pound a box, when we're doing several thousand cartridges a month, it's kind on his pocket. This is a shoot where you can have 100 to 200 birds every couple of days and it costs £20 a day. Not £20 a bird, a day. There are some drawbacks. The birds are blackened, greasy, not grousy, and you are in a pig field. But the shooting is amazing. If you want to give this a go, you will find Matt's email address in the description below.